Hello, we're the History Hikers. I'm Dries. And I'm Jente. And we are still in Albi. And from the small Collegial, we're now showing you the big cathedral. Let's go and check it out. Not even 100 meters away from the saint Salvi church, we can find the medieval cathedral dedicated to Saint Cecilia. Despite its austere exterior, this is one of the most richly decorated medieval cathedrals in Europe. The 12th and 13th centuries were marked with conflict in Albi's history. There were political squabbles between powerful lords, as well as a rise in popularity of the Cathar heresy made possible because of the excesses of the Occitan high clergy turning away many believers. The Albigensian crusade followed, which has featured heavily already on our channel. After this period of upheaval, it was important for the Albigensian bishop to recover quickly and cheaply. The recent rediscovery of terracotta bricks proved to be very convenient. Construction of the new cathedral began in 1282. Its aim was to show the power of the Catholic Church, to protect its sanctuary with thick walls and to show the feeling of poverty in response to Catharism. This architectural style is referred to as Southern Gothic. Despite bricks being used for fast construction, it wouldn't be until 1480 that the cathedral was consecrated by Bishop Louis I of Amboise. Events like the Hundred Years' War and plague epidemics stagnated construction. Since the last Cathar was burned in 1321, the austerity once advocated was by now no longer necessary. It is no surprise then that the interior of this cathedral is what makes it truly spectacular. The first thing that catches your eye upon entering is the lavish paintings all over the church. In fact, the beautiful frescoes that adorn the vaulted ceiling are still completely original and date all the way back to the early 16th century when Bishop Louis II of Amboise brought in many Italian artists to create a lasting masterpiece, each vault representing a different episode from the Bible. Their exceptional dimensions make them the largest and oldest Italian Renaissance painted ensemble in France. Another stunning fresco can be found at the western end of the cathedral, beneath the great organ. Also executed in the 15th century, it depicts the Last Judgment and is the largest medieval fresco in southern France. It is broken up by the current main altar. Charles Le Goût de la Bergère, bishop in the 17th century, decided to adapt his cathedral to the general movement of putting the faithful back at the heart of the Mass by removing the separation between religious and lay people. To save the root screen, he sacrifices the central part of the Last Judgment by opening a door to build a chapel under the bell tower to install a new altar.
We can now turn our attention to the elephant in the cathedral, the stone root screen. It is a stone fence that isolated the chapter of canons from the rest of the faithful during services. It splits the cathedral choir, effectively rendering it a church within the cathedral. This root screen, dating to the 15th century, is so intricately carved it resembles lace. Its remarkable state of conservation makes it all the more precious, as most of the root screens have been destroyed. There are only about 10 left in France. The chancel itself is richly decorated with statues of prophets, apostles, angels and others. There was one fancy ass cathedral, pardon my French. A real great example of how churches in the Middle Ages were not bland, boring and white, really colorful. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe and all the good other YouTube stuff if and you want to see more of these kind of historical places. Until next time. Bye. Bye.